Hey, this is Bob, and I just wanted to go over what I consider a lost art, and that is programming the Firewatch 411 uh, UD uh, digital alarm communicator transmitter. Uh, we use these uh, to communicate to a uh, um, IP DACT uh, connected to the network so that we can have alarms sent from devices other than a fire panel, such as a moisture alarm or anything that, uh, like a, a sump pump float alarm, uh, anything that has a relay or is set up with a relay that's normally open that can uh, connect, uh, this can be used for that. And they don't make these anymore, so we just pull them from places like uh, eBay, etc. So anyway, uh, programming these is, again is a lost art. So what you need is you need, of course, the uh, the Firewatch 411 to program. You're also going to need the Firewatch 411 series DACT programmer, which is very it's crucial. You have to have that, and then you'll also need a Phillips screwdriver and then a small standard screwdriver for connections. And last but not least is you're going to need a 12 volt or 24 volt DC um, adapter. And what I've done here, it had a connector on there. We just stripped it back to, just to show the two wires, uh, black being ground and um, uh, yellow being the positive. So you'll need that to power the card so that we can do the programming. So here we go. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the panel on the 411 dialer and I'm going to use my Phillips for that. Some of these units have captured screws or captive screws. Some of them don't. This one doesn't so you just have to unscrew them and keep that in a safe place. And the panel comes off and here you can see that there are connectors and there's also a connector here so we're going to be using these power uh, to power it up we're going to use this one to connect to the, the fire watch so here we go next thing we do is we are going to connect the power to these connectors here these terminals now the last one here is not the one you want to use that one would be connected to chassis ground it's going to be the second and third from the right. Second being ground, third being the uh, positive voltage. So here we go. I'm basically just going to turn these counterclockwise to release or to open up the connectors. And then I'm going to take my power and I'm going to go ahead and put these guys in here as such. And then with them in there, and I hold them in there, I'm going to go ahead and turn uh, the screws clockwise to tighten them up. Okay, great. Nice and tight. There they are. Connect the uh, programmer. And it's, uh, this is keyed, so there's only one way that it can go in. And you'll see that. And so now the programmer is connected. And it's ready to program. So what we're going to use is we're going to use the programming sheet. And I have one pre-populated here. Basically the first page is all we use. And we're going to use a couple of... Uh, things that are just common, not really extremely important, but it's a, a fake phone number because this thing thinks it's going to actually dial out and dial a, a, a phone or a phone number to connect to a, an alarm system, but it's not. Uh, so we're going to use 4252. And then also we're going to need, which is extremely important, is you're going to need the account number that you're going to program this uh, uh, 411 dialer to. Uh, that here at s and is the building number and then generally um, if it's a fire alarm it's generally the building number um, with leading zeros and if it's 
a something like an, a, a burglar alarm or something else. It could be uh, the building number with an A or a B or an E. Um, those are some of the letters that we've used. So knowing that, we'll be able to program it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and plug this in. And uh, you just want to note that when you plug it in, uh, it is going to emit an, an alarm because it's waking up and it's finding that it's not connecting to anything. So it gets a little grumpy. But nonetheless, we can turn it on here. And we can silence that alarm once we get going here. So you hear that. There's this button right here. You press that and it silence the alarm. Just as simple as that. Now you'll notice that the 411 programmer is lit up. Now we can uh, use this to start programming the uh, 411 dialer. So how we do that, there are instructions on the back of this. Basically it says there's five, five modes of operation. We're going to use two today. And one is program, which will put the card uh, into programming mode so we'll be able to actually configure it. And then there's normal, which will end that programming and then uh, bring it back to uh, normal operating. So it says here, press the mode key, enter in a valid four-digit code, and then press enter store. So if I go over here, I see there's a mode key, and then enter store is down here. So to program, it's 7764. So what we're going to do is we're going to press mode. 7, 7, 6, 4, and enter. So now we're entering into the programming mode. The next thing it's asking for here is uh, it wants us to put in a password or a passcode. Uh, the default passcode for the 411 dialer is all zeros. So as you start typing this in, you'll see their dashes. There they are and go ahead and press enter. Now it has accepted that code and now it's saying do you want to change the password or do you want to leave it as a default? Well we are going to leave it as a default so D is for default. We're going to go ahead and press D and then press enter. Now we are in program mode, fully in program mode. Now what you see here, this double, uh, these double digits here are the register or storage slot number. And what you see on this side is what's inside that storage slot. Each slot holds a hexadecimal number from zero through F. And by default, most of them are set already as Fs. So here, now we need to use the programming sheet in order to set this up. So the very first thing we're gonna do is uh, enter in 4252, which are the first four slots here, and then uh, we'll go on. So I'm in slot zero, that's a four, and then I enter store. Slot one, that's a two, I enter store. Slot two, 50, and then two. Okay, so I've got 4252 in there, and you can actually use the up and down arrows to take a look. So there's the four, there's the uh, two, there's the five, there's the two. And now we're at slot four. Now, the next set of slots here, we're not using them, so we're just gonna leave them as Fs, and they're already set up as, as hexadecimal Fs. So we're gonna go ahead and just press enter until we get to slot 20. Just leave them all as Fs. And here we are in slot 20 now. Slot 20 is E, and that is what we're going to leave it as. And basically that's the primary central station communication format. E for us is what we use, that's the ADEMCO uh, alarm. And the next four after this is going to be our account. So let's say we're going to program this for uh, an alarm 2E. So that's building two, and that's our sump pump alarm is 2E. So we're going to actually enter in 002E. We're gonna put those leading zeros in because we have four slots to fill. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to 21. So 21 through 24, there's a zero, that's fine. Enter, 
uh, 22, that's a zero. Okay, now I'm going to put 2e in. So here's 23, I'm going to put the 2 and enter. And then 24, I'm going to put the e and enter. So what I have now, if I go back over here, so 21 through 24, there's 0, 0, 2, E. So we're good there. Now the next four is what time you want the dialer to send a test um, message to the uh, uh, central alarm system. So we're going to put in here uh, 4 o'clock. So that the next four slots would be 0, 4, 0, 0. This is military time, so if you want two in the afternoon, that would be 1400. So we're gonna do four o'clock. So I'm gonna go ahead and press enter. And at 25, I'm gonna put in, it's already got a zero, that's good. 26, I'm gonna put a four. 27, I'm gonna leave as a zero. And 28, I'm gonna leave as a zero. And now I'm at number 29. So I put in the account, I put in the time that I want the uh, test to go out for in the morning. The next one here is uh, 29 is the primary number test time interval. So in other words, do we want to test every 24 hours, that's a zero, one for 12 hours every 12, two for every eight, three for every six. We're going to do 24 hours and we're going to leave it at 29, uh, 29 at zero. The next part, we're basically going to duplicate what we've already gone through on the phone number and the account and a, and a test time also for a secondary central station uh, communication. Um, we, we just basically just duplicate these and uh, change the time just a little bit so that they're not trying to go off at the same time for the test signal. So here we are at 29. Um, we're going to go to 30 now. And here we're going to put in that 4252 that we did before. So 30 is going to be a 4, 31 is going to be a 2, 32 is um, going to be a 5, and 33 is going to be a 2. And now we're going to have Fs. We're just going to press enter until we get to number 50. These just stay Fs. And here we have 50, it's already set for E. That Again, that's our ADEMCO coding, that's good. And here we are at 51. 51 through 54, we're gonna set our, the exact same account number that we did before. So 002E is what we're setting today. So there's a zero, there's a zero. 53, we'll go ahead and put in a two, enter. And then 54, we're gonna put an E and enter. And now we're, uh, on the uh, what time we want that secondary test signal to go. And so let's say we do uh, 4.15 in the morning, so that's 0.415. So 55 is 0, that's fine. Uh, 56 is 4. 57 is 1. And 58 is 5. So again, if we use our arrows here, and it's okay to do so, we can go back over here. And let's see, uh, 55, 55, 0, 4, 1, 5. All right, so we're at 59 now, which is, again, that 24-hour, 12-hour uh, section. We leave it at 0. And the next one is 60. And 60 is uh, power loss reporting delay. So in other words, if it loses power, how long do we want it to wait before it uh, sends a trouble signal? So we have test intervals uh, either zero for 20, um, zero for no delay, one for one hour, two for two hours, three for six hours, etc., etc. Well, we don't want any delay. If it loses power, we want to know about it. So we're going to enter a zero here and press enter. Okay, so we're at 61 now, uh, which just remains as a zero. And we're going to actually enter until we get to... So next we're going to go to 64. That's the next one. 62 was a 1. That doesn't matter. 63 is 0. That doesn't matter. 64. Okay, 64 is communicator enable or disable. 
Well, we do not want this communicator to be disabled, so we're going to have to put a 1 here. Why it's not default as a 1, I don't know, but 64, important, very important. Let's put a 1 in there. So you can see here, I just heard a, the relay click on this board, so it knows now that it, it should be communicating. And uh, so, so there we are. Again, 64 is 1. Very good. And the next one, 65, 66, 67, and 68, are the settings for these four channels here. Now, these are normally open relay channels. So, in other words, with a resistor across them. So, in other words, when this one is uh, shorted, what do we want? What kind of an uh, alarm do we want? Same with 2, 3, and 4. So, these are the choices. So, uh, Zero is a fire alarm, one is a panel trouble, and two is a supervisory, and four is for AC loss. Well, for these here, when we're configuring them for moisture alarms and, and, and float alarms and things like that, it, we're only going to be using one of these, but I generally just go ahead and set all four of these for fire, and that way you don't have to remember which relay you're supposed to hook up when you um, connect. So for 64, it's a one, it's, it's enabled. So 65, I'm gonna leave that as a zero. 66, I'm going to change to a zero. 67, I'm going to change to a zero. And 68, I'm going to change to a zero. That way I don't have to guess, there you go. I do not have to guess which one to connect to. I can connect to any of the four so a moisture alarm goes off, it's going to uh, relay out as a fire alarm. Now I am done programming this 411 dialer. So what I'm going to do now is I need to set this back into normal mode. So if I look on the back of my um, programmer, I see norm is 6676. So what I'm going to do here is press mode, 667 six and then press enter silence my alarm and it is ready to roll so now what I can do is I can go ahead and remove power unplug it and then uh, take my programmer out button it back up and I'm ready to take it out to the site